everyone, my name is Eva, I am a functional consultant at Odoo and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this workshop about how to handle your budgets and forecasts with Odoo Spreadsheet. So as mentioned, it's a workshop, so the format is a bit different as usual. It means that I'm going to show you and explain to you how this new feature works, uh, demonstrate it with the use case and then we are going to do this together in a brand new database uh, that we are going to create together uh, so you can follow step by step and experience uh, what this new feature is like. Afterwards we'll have a uh, Q&A session uh, so if you have any questions don't hesitate to log them uh, in next to this video. So first let's take a step back to version 13 and what was budget management like then. So we have a budget management tool where we can track income and expenses um, through accounts and analytic accounts. However, it was a little bit unflexible and it was too limited for reporting needs. So thanks to your feedback as our clients and partners, uh, we were able to, came up, to come up with a solution, which is Odoo Spreadsheets. So how does it work exactly? Odoo Spreadsheets is hosted in the Documents app. And to create a spreadsheet, you're going to have to go for budget, for example, in the accounting app, um, present your uh, values in a certain way, generate the spreadsheet that will be hosted in the, um, in the documents app. But it's not the only connection this app has, has. So you can generate a spreadsheet from a lot of different applications like inventory, CRM projects, and in fact, many others. So what is the common ground here? What makes it possible to, to generate a spreadsheet from almost anywhere in the database? The common ground is the pivot table. So whenever, wherever you have a pivot table, you can generate a spreadsheet. So with this new feature, you are going to be able to turn your pivot tables into a tool that gives you more flexibility in order to make your own customized reports with real-time data. And I stress this point uh, a lot because this, this, this is a real added value here because your reports are going to be updated in real time. We'll check this later. So this is the result that you want, you might expect to get through uh, this new feature. So it's just like a basic spreadsheet tool. Uh, this is my pivot table that I customize by adding columns, ratios, and so on, and keep it updated in real time. I'm going to show you how it works through a use case that I'm going uh, to demonstrate. For this use case, I chose a company that sells customized interior design and renovation solutions that wants to track and monitor budgets quarterly by projects. And the only constraint is that the report must display the delta between the actuals and the forecast. So let's try this together. I'm going to go in my database. So in this database, the only thing I need uh, to find is a way to present for each of my projects um, my income and my expenses. So for that, I'm going to go in my accounting application. In the reporting menu, I have what uh, we call the invoice analysis. And see here on the right hand side, I have my icon for my pivot tables. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to uh, change a little bit the way it's presented. So I want to um, group them by analytic account because each project has an analytic account linked to it and group them by invoice date by quarter and finally i'm going to add another group which is for journals because i want to distinguish my invoices uh, my income and my expenses and i'm going to expand everything and then what's the real addition here compared to compared to v13 is the insert in spreadsheet button so if i click here i'm going to have the possibility to either create a new spreadsheet or uh, insert it in an existing one, which is what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to choose my spreadsheet and I'm going to confirm. So this is what it looks like directly, you know, super fast, super convenient. Uh, and uh, I'm going to customize this a little bit. So I'm going to add my columns, one for my forecast, so my planned budget, and one for my performance ratio. I'm just gonna Oh, okay, so I'm going to put actuals, forecasts, 
performance, copy paste this. And uh, basically what you have to do in this case is to manually add your budget forecast for each project. And basically my weary show is going to be the actuals divided by the forecast, but you can do whatever you like. It's uh, really up to you actually. And once I uh, complete this, this is what I can expect to get. So a table that is complete, I've completed my forecasts, I've added my performance ratios and I've even added a little con conditional formatting so to see where I messed something up or not. So for example, for the second, um, the project number two, see that uh, I invoiced a little bit less than I expected, uh, but you see that in the end, I still have a, a good performance ratio. Okay, so, um, for uh, this, this tool is actually really powerful, but the real thing is that you get updated data. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a new bill, a new vendor bill, uh, and see what happens uh, in, uh, in my report afterwards. So for example, I'm going to add, I've received an ar architect fees from quarter two for the uh, project number one. So I'm going to go back in accounting. In my vendor bills, Create a new one. Ben McFly, which is which he is my architect, architect fees. I won't forget to add the analytic account as number one, and I'm going to add two thousand in price. Take out the tax just for this. I'm going to save. Uh, well, I just need to change the date because it was a bill from the second quarter and I'm going to validate. And now I'm going to go back within my documents app, because as I said, all the spreadsheets are hosted there. And I'm here with my spreadsheet project profitability 2020 quarterly. And you see that here, before, before uh, I updated my invoice, it was $8,798 and now it's $10,000. So you see, I haven't, uh, I haven't had to do anything just to update my report. So all your days of keeping your reports updated are basically over. So that's something that's super convenient to use and I really advise you to take advantage of this. Um, and here I have my solution. So it took me like six minutes to realize my, my reports is basically done. Um, and I get my solution for my use case. So now let's jump uh, to the second use case, which is uh, where you will experience yourself this new feature. So what I'm going to ask you is go uh, create a URL, uh, a new web page where you are going to write www odoo.com slash start 14. That way you can create, you'll be able to create a test database, you'll arrive on this page. And I'm going to select an app to start testing. So for this use case, you are going to need the accounting app, documents app, and let's say, um, where is it? Um, sales and purchases. And I'm going to continue. I'm going to complete this. So we're going to say, okay, OXP 2020, my number. Uh, we am going to do in English. I'm going to put United States like this. It stays in, mm, oh yeah, it's going to be this in French. Okay, use it in my company and start now. So here your uh, database is loading. When it loads, I'm going to explain to you uh, what I'm going to show you in this uh, exercise. So there are two additional features that are really interesting in uh, using Odoo spreadsheets. One is uh, the templates because all the steps I've done earlier was uh, create a pivot table, then insert it in a spreadsheet, customize it. Well, Otto has already done it for you. So we've already default templates that you can use for your budget, for your sales commissions, and uh, a lot more. And second is all the filter conditions. So you're going to be able to filter on this information within your reports, and you won't have to create as many reports as possible. So once you're in the database, what I want you to do is we are going to load the demo data. You can achieve this by going through the settings application, which is the last one of your dashboard. 
you're going to arrive on the general setting page and uh, under it, at the bottom of the page, you have what we call the developer tools. You are going to click on the activate the developer mode. So click on it. It's going to load a little bit and it's going to get you back to the dashboard. So I want you to go again in the settings, go at the bottom of the page again, same thing. And then you have this option called load demo data. You're going to go there and a window is going to pop up saying, okay, danger zone, are you sure you want to do this? Can you can, they, these cannot be removed afterwards. And you're going to click on, yes, I understand the risks. You're going to click on it, it's going to load again. Takes a little bit of time. Perfect. So what, why did we do this is just to uh, have some values just to make our example easier. So to create a spreadsheet, you don't uh, always have to go through another application and a pivot table. You can go within the documents application. And uh, for this example, uh, you see on the left hand side, you have different workspaces. I want you to go in the finance uh, workspace so is so it's where you have all the financial default templates logged in so to create a spreadsheet easy you just click on create spreadsheet smart button next to the upload button on the left hand side of your screen and you have four different options you can either create a blank spreadsheet or follow one of the three templates that you have created here. So with, uh, with uh, this example, we are going to use the budget report quarterly template. So you select it and then you click on create. When you arrive here, basically you see the job is done for you. You have, how is this report uh, built? You have uh, all your income and revenue, uh, income and expenses account, sorry, uh, dispatched. So here I have only two. That's normal because uh, I have only these two in uh, involved in my journal items. But if I had another expense account, I would have it also in the list. And it's divided quarterly with my forecast and my performance. But you can always update it uh, the way you wish. So if I only want uh, I don't know, 3,000 for Q1 for my expenses. I can update it here. I want 40,000 here. I want 5,000 there. Everything's going to change. And you see, if I change this and I put like 300,000, let's go crazy. See, my, like my performance changes automatically. So that's something that you can really take advantage of. So your life is going to be so much easier using this. All your values are still updated in uh, real time. But if you want to change something, so let's say I want my income and expense and net profit to be in another color because I, I like it in, let's say, purple. And I want to add, I don't know, new columns, let's say. I can decide it too, but if you want to save it for later, because every budget report you want to use is going to be that way, you can save your own templates. So you, you're not limited to the templates Odoo uh, has implemented in the database by clicking on the file menu at the left hand side at the top of the page. And the last option is save as templates. So you can click there. You have a pop-up image, a pop-up window that uh, will ask you to rename the template. So I'm going to just take a template and write, okay, Eva's template. And I'm going to confirm. Why is it super cool? Because whenever I want to create a new spreadsheet now, you'll be able to choose this template, which is super nice. Okay, so I'm just going to show you. If I go back in documents, you, know, you can either use the breadcrumbs or click on the name of the application. I'm going to create a spreadsheet again. And now you see that I have a fourth template, which is actually the template I saved. So you can always already decide to click it, create, and my job is done. So you can really take advantage of this flexibility, new flexibility that you have now. The last thing I want to show you about uh, this um, this uh, this new feature is the filter possibilities. So for the filters, it's a bit tricky to see, but on the top right hand side, you have a filter icon. 
If you click on it, you'll see all the filters that are already applied with this, within this report. So by default, you always have um, the year. So if I change it, I can change the data and say, I don't want the 2020 data, but I want 2019. I can do it, okay, and see that my report already changes. It goes everything back to zero because obviously I don't have any data from 2019 right now. I'm going to go back, but imagine, uh, let's imagine you want to add an additional filter because you want to only see your own, uh, your own, uh, your customer invoices and nothing else. Uh, I'm going to add a new filter using these three, these three options. So the date is pretty obvious. The text is something to use, for example, if you want to, to track all these invoices with a specific reference or something, you can use it. But the, we are going to use the relation, okay? So I'm going to say I want to filter by journal. What I have to do is add the related model, which is going to be, uh, in this case, to journals. but. It could be anything else. If you want to see only the sales, uh, the, all the uh, expenses and income based on the product, you can do this as well. So I'm going to choose the journal in my case, and I want the default value to be customer invoices and vendor bills, for example, and that's it. Okay. So I don't want to see miscellaneous operations or, or bank movements and so on. And the last thing I have to do is go at the bottom and save my filter. So you see that now in my filters, I have a second line for journals and I can update it as much as I like it. So if I want only to see the customer invoices, I can take out the second journal and you see uh, by uh, default, you're gonna see that there is nothing more in the expenses, which is logical because these accounts won't get a lot involved in the customer invoices journal. And I can do as much as I please, actually. So you can really play with this at, uh, as much as you like. Uh, it's really something uh, that is going also to evolve and in, in, uh, make it more user-friendly. But for now, it just matches all your scope of reporting needs has become so wide thanks to this functionality. So that's it for this, uh, this demonstration. Uh, Let's go back to the slides. Okay, where's my... Sorry, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, nope, it's okay. Up, uh, yeah. But yeah, you might also like for... Um, if you, you are interested in other uh, features of this Odoo spreadsheet, you might also like three additional uh, talks that are scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, so feel free to join and schedule these, uh, watch these uh, videos. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't, don't leave yet. Uh, we are going to uh, have a Q&A session. So stay tuned and I'll answer your questions in a few minutes. So welcome to this Q&A session. Thank you, Eva, for your uh, workshop. That was very insightful. We have a number of questions from our viewers. I will go through them now um, um, sequentially. Please keep asking your questions. If we still have time at the end, I will uh, add some to the list we've already acquired. So I have a question from Ahmed um, Afilis. He, there, there's, is there a place where we can upload our forecasts in the system? Yes, actually it is. You can always upload uh, classic Excel files through uh, the documents application. Okay, thank you very much. There has been another question, I don't know from who it was. Could you please explain again how to save the templates so you can see them when you go to the doc app? Okay, let me show you quickly uh, you using uh, my database. So you can easily create, uh, let, let's take a pivot table, whatever, which, which one I'm gonna take my invoice analysis, for example, in my pivot table. Okay, and I'm gonna insert it in the spreadsheet. So if I arrive here and I want to add Sorry, it takes a bit of time, it's loading. A bit of loading well, time. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope it clears out. 
Otherwise, we take the time to. Ah, no, um, okay, it's fine. Good. So, if you want to, you know, you customize, you take the time to customize your um, your um, spreadsheet. You know, you add, you know, feature, yeah, forecasts and stuff. And you want to save it every time um, that you want to use it. You can just click on File here, and you have Save as Template. You can define the uh, the name of the template. Yeah, we're just loading it a bit. And uh, afterwards, when you are back in the Documents application, you can um, choose among the you have all the default default templates and you can you will have your additional ones that you created or the other ones created if you have the right access to okay thank you Mary. thank you very much for that additional um, showcase we have a lot of people asking similar questions around whether this is a native odoo spreadsheet solution or whether we are integrating here a google sheets or mm -hmm. excel sheets can you say a little bit about that and also uh, if there is any um, where the the number of formulas for instance uh, excel mm. and spreadsheet users are used do we have them in this mm -hmm. spreadsheet as yeah. well okay so uh, this is a completely native uh, calculator tool so it's our odoo spreadsheet and concerning the formulas and what you are how you can compare it to other uh, spreadsheet tools like excel or google spreadsheet uh, we have our own library of formulas that is not uh, linked to a version which means that for now uh, we have a partial amount of formulas integrated in odoo but as time goes by, we're going to have more and more. And even if we are implementing one uh, new formulas in V15, you're going to be able to have them as well in V14. So it's not something that is going to be static uh, on a version. Thank you very much for that. Um, I have another question from uh, Nur Ahmed Jaffa Netzo. Can I use the project budget I'm already using in, in the Udo budgeting app? To I guess to 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 uh, integrate with the spreadsheet. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't really. Uh, I'm not sure that what the question means, but uh, you can if you have a way to um, display your project budgets in a pivot table in Odoo, you can without any problem insert it in a spreadsheet and customize it with ratios and computed fields as you like. Okay, thank you so much. Um, that question has been popped up a couple of times. Now a question on, here a question on the spreadsheet data you're using. Um, Effin is asking, all the demonstrations you show, how to change the spreadsheet, but where does Udo take the data from? If you change it, does this affect the accountancy, for example, for sales, it looks it looks that way. So basically, if you change something on the spreadsheet, mm -hmm. does that affect the data on the actual database backend? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, um, the data is based on the pivot table that you've generated in Odoo. Okay, yeah. so it's from it's in only one way. Okay, so you take the values from, from the pivot table and you insert them in spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And if you add, you know, if if it's a pivot table for invoices, and then you create a new invoice, the spreadsheet is going to be updated, yeah. not the other way around. So you mm -hmm. cannot affect all the data within uh, your uh, within the database by influencing a spreadsheet. So basically, if I instead of ten thousand, I put twelve thousand. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you are going to do is erase the formula that takes the information in the pivot table and you're going to get a cell with only 12, 12k in it and that's it. And it's not going to be updated. So it's better to keep the, the system, uh, keep the spreadsheet be updated uh, by itself. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, another question has been, can a spreadsheet read from another spreadsheet? Can we integrate different spreadsheets with each other from different um, from different views in all? Yes, actually, if, if I understand the question correctly, mm -hmm. you can easily uh, combine uh, multiple pivot tables. So if you want to compare your sales mm -hmm. with your what you have actually invoiced, mm -hmm. you can easily choose two pivot tables, insert them in the same spreadsheet and combine them and all the values are going to be updated. Okay, thank you. Um, there's another speech, uh, another question about forecasts. Is there a way to connect expected revenues from the CRM application to the spreadsheet? 
if you find again if you find a way to uh, put it in a pivot table mm -hmm. you are, can actually do anything mm -hmm. so yeah that's not a problem and I guess also that you if you have historic data from previous month so you can no forecast yeah. using the spreadsheet tool as well right so um, there's another question can the spreadsheet be shared to other users in read-only mode uh, I don't think so I think it's mm -hmm. not, not something that has been developed yet but uh, Again, it's a brand new feature, so it's definitely going to evolve in time and maybe have this uh, new kind of functionality. Okay, thank you. So, uh, we don't have much time left. I'm just going through a few last questions. Um, this right inside Odo question again. Can we set access right for different users who can view only, edit, etc.? You can, uh, again, it's, you have two uh, level access in the documents app. You can is either see my own documents or all the documents. Yeah. But in terms of editing, commenting and so on, it's not that uh, precise. So okay. keep, you, can re you can restrict the access to a few documents, but all your users will have access uh, to the f all the functionalities of editing. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. So that's it. No more time left, I'm afraid. Thank you uh, to all of your questions. Um, there's still possibility to go to a yeah. um, private chat room to continue that conversation. Thank you very much, Eva. Thank you, Julian.